Welcome to the third episode of Can Machines Think? In previous episodes, we've seen how computer components were inspired by human brains, human memories, and human accessories. But if that's the case, how do we know if our intelligence is truly superior to theirs? And how can anyone determine with confidence if computers are capable of thinking or not? To answer this, we will review a set of arguments from a completely different perspective. So instead of reasoning about why computers might be able to think, let's try to explain why they can't. And I kid you not, the nine opposing arguments you are about to see are a substantial part of Turing's paper. He disagreed with all of them, and yet he chose to highlight them regardless. Now, you will find that it's not about who's right and who's wrong. It is only about what makes sense to you, because nobody, not even 75 years later, knows the correct answer. So let's begin. Now, the first objection is, of course, religious. Thinking is a function of soul and spirit. God gave us humans an immortal soul, but he didn't give it to machines, and therefore, machines cannot think. But from a similar perspective, if God chose to grant us souls, why can't he choose to grant them to anyone else? Now, the second objection is called the heads in the sand objection, and it is very popular lately. The consequences of thinking machines are way too terrifying, so let's hope and believe that this will never happen. But does ignoring reality can actually change it? Now, the logic behind this argument is that we consider human intelligence to be superior to the rest of the creation. We have this Je ne sais quoi, this special set of skills that no other creature is capable of, which is correct, but we didn't always have those capabilities. There is a very big gap between the intelligence of a caveman and of a modern individual. So if we were able to develop our qualities over centuries upon centuries upon centuries, isn't it a bit arrogant to assume that other creatures cannot? The next objection is based on a mathematical proof that there are certain things that machines cannot do, mainly because of hardware limitations. So, if we play the imitation game, there are certain questions on which machines will fail to answer correctly or fail to answer at all. And I think we all agree on this one, but here's some food for thought. Aren't humans also wrong sometimes? Do we always know the correct answer or... Are we also limited to the information we are exposed to? Number four is the argument of consciousness. Embrace yourself, because this one is extremely difficult to dispute. So, okay, AI is now capable of generating music, paintings, poetry, and all kinds of art. It takes examples of existing art, and out of those examples, it creates something new that the world has never seen before. But how do we know if this creation is not just symbols and digits miraculously falling in place based on some math rather than passion or emotion or the actual feelings that art helps us express. So yeah, we've trained AI to write music, but it's not just about writing it. It is also about being aware of what has been written. What was the motivation behind writing it? Is there any sense of satisfaction with what was accomplished? These are very important questions, but the main complexity here is that the only way for us to know if a machine is truly aware of its actions is to be that machine, so we may never know. Now, argument number five is similar to other objections, and it goes along the lines of, I have no doubt that computers can do all kinds of things, but they will never, ever be able to do X and Y. Good examples of X and Y are, computers will never be able to enjoy strawberries and cream, or fall in love, or have a sense of humor, and so on and so on. But since no one knows what the future will bring, how can we say with such confidence that something will never happen? Maybe one day we'll be able to encapsulate taste, or translate love into some frequency or some geometric shape. We don't really know, so let's just wait and see. Argument 6 belongs to Ada Lovelace, who strongly believed that machines cannot initiate anything. They can only do what we are able to explain them. Now, to be fair, 
Ada referred to a very specific machine called the analytical engine, but the argument is still relevant. Machines simply perform instructions that humans give them, so there is nothing original about their work and therefore they cannot think. But then, how original is our work? So, for example, many modern musicians were inspired by Pink Floyd, who were inspired by the Beatles, who were inspired by Elvis, and so on, all the way until King David or some ancient Sumerian musicians. As humans, we learn from existing examples and then we just expand upon them. So, is there anything new under the sun? Objection 7 reflects on our nervous system. Machines have a limited storage capacity while our nervous system does not. Neurons are expanding while microchips are not, and therefore, our process of thought can never be properly replicated into a machine. But then, the beauty of 2023 is that we can always add more storage. We just go to the store, we buy some storage, we plug it in, and boom, we have officially expanded our storage capacity. Not to even mention the concept of artificial neural networks, which we will talk about in great detail in the upcoming episode. The next objection is based on human behavior. We cannot summarize every aspect of our character in a single set of rules. Even if we try to do so, we will never account for all possible circumstances. So, for example, we stop at a red traffic light and then we proceed as soon as it turns green. But what do we do if both lights are on? It doesn't happen very often and it's obviously some kind of a glitch. But how do we behave when this glitch happens? There's an infinite amount of behaviors to an infinite amount of situations. And since we cannot account for all of them, we cannot teach machines how to behave properly. But then, do we always know how to behave? Aren't we sometimes awkward and confused? And then who's to say what is proper behavior and what is not? The last argument deals with mystics and extrasensory perception. Thoughts can be read, the future can be predicted, and spoons can be bent using the power of human will. If you ask a scientist, that's probably nonsense. But if you ask someone like Baba Vanga, I bet you you'll ask for the winning lottery numbers, regardless of how skeptical you are. Because maybe there is something magical about our perception, some paranormal component that we can observe but we cannot explain. But if that's the case, how do we know if it's fortune-telling or just a glorious guess? So, for example, if we choose a digit from 0 to 9 and then a machine is able to guess it, does it mean that this machine now has some superpowers or is it just a random coincidence? Now, after observing all these arguments, I'm going to leave you with a set of questions. So, one, which of these arguments do you find appealing and why? Two, can you think of other arguments that Turing may have missed? And then three, what would be your answer to the question of can machines think? Please share your thoughts in the comments below and I will read some of my favorite answers in an upcoming live stream. So please keep it in mind. Now, I'll see you very soon in another awesome series called How Computers Think. In the meanwhile, bye-bye. And thank you so much for watching. If you found this video helpful, please share it with the world and don't forget to leave it a huge thumbs up. If you'd like to see more videos of this kind, you can always subscribe to my channel and turn on the notification bell. I'll see you very soon in another awesome tutorial. In the meanwhile, bye-bye.